Hello everyone and welcome to The Lit Fart. Uh, it's time for our first review video. Um, based on the feedback that I had from everyone who saw the trailer of this channel, uh, it seems that it's not, the general opinion was that it wasn't a totally bad idea to go ahead with it. Um, except that I really should try not to be reading from a script so much, so I'm now going to, I'm attempting to do it entirely spontaneously and I have got no idea how to do this and I will probably make a complete mess of it and there will be lots of ums and ahs and I will try to edit some of them out uh, which is why it will probably jiggle about all over the place when uh, you actually see this. Anyway, anyway, uh, we'll get used to this. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today for my very first review is this wonderful book, Their Brilliant Careers by Ryan O'Neill. Um, however, my plan for this channel is to take a slightly discursive approach to this thing and take a meandering path to it. So I'm going to start by talking about science fiction films of the early 1970s. Um, and basically, there were two science fiction films in the early 70s, one of which was 2001 Space Oddity, and the other one was Solaris. Uh, Solaris was often referred to as the Soviet 2001. But in many ways, I, I think it's a better film. And all the more so for being made under Soviet-era budgetary constraints. There are no special effects. Uh, the, film, the film stock is weird, uh, because at times you're never quite sure, as with actually with most of Tarkovsky's films, whether you're watching it black and white or in colour or somewhere in between. The actual effect is it actually increases the sort of alienation and the, and the sort of science fiction or the sort of sciencey type of um, uh, feeling to it, I guess. Um, and that, I mean, that there's one extraordinary sequence uh, where the cosmonaut is on his way to the cosmodrome, I suppose. Uh, waiting to be uh, to go off into space, and Tarkovsky holds a shot of him sitting, being in the back of this car, just watching the the, the, the buildings go past outside, and it just holds this shot for a long time, and there's no special effects, no dialogue, no nothing, but you you just get an impression of. Well, you wonder what must be going on through his head, and it, it really amplifies the, the whole effect of it. It is an extraordinary film. Uh, it's this is this is the film, well worth getting hold of. Um, it's probably on I don't know, whatever you kids watch on Netflix or whatever I don't know, um, or or buy a DVD. Fine. But it's it, it it's a really fantastic film, and it's about three hours long. Uh, so if you're troubled by the idea of watching a three-hour science fiction film with very little in the way of special effects and with subtitles. You might prefer to uh, watch this one, which has got George Clooney in it, and is directed by Steven Soderbergh, and it's not bad. It's almost exactly half the length, and exactly the same amount of uh, plot in it. Um, it's, it's not quite the same, though. No. Not quite the same. I, 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 I prefer further original. Why am I talking about Solaris? Because I, 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 I so enjoyed Solaris, I wanted to read the book. I knew it was based on a book by a science fiction author called Stanislaw Lem, a Polish science fiction author. Um, again, this, this was slightly curious at the time because he was from the other side of the Iron Curtain and most of the literature that we read in those days was from our side of the, the Iron Curtain. Um, and it was quite a shock to realise that there was there was a guy out there living under uh, a communist regime who was able to somehow able to write um, some remarkably speculative fiction, which is interesting. Uh, anyway, this is eventually in 1981, uh, Penguin brought out this rather splendid three-in-one volume with Solaris. The Chain of Chance and A Perfect Vacuum. Solaris, the, the, the book was great, I really enjoyed that. 
Chain of Chance, somewhat more austere work. I'm less keen on that one. The Revelation was a perfect vacuum. The thing about the perfect vacuum is that it is a collection of reviews of non-existent books. And that is a, it's a terrific idea. And uh, what makes it what really makes it absolutely brilliant is the way that Lem uses that concept. Because uh, some of the books are utterly preposterous. They are you, you, you could not imagine them ever being written. I mean there's one extraordinary one extraordinary one called which he reviews called Gigamesh. Uh, sick, not Gilgamesh, Gigamesh. Which is is sort of intense uh, experimental um, novel, uh, wherein the author just plays around and tries to find inner meaning to the word Gilgamesh by or Gigamesh rather by playing it forwards, playing it backwards, basing a character on it, and it, it the whole thing is completely bonkers, and and it, it is such a a tour de force, I suppose. Uh, that you imagine how much, how how long it took to write the the review, with the way it's constructed, and the, the book would take forever. But it's 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 it, 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 it's a lot of fun. Uh, also, there's satire. There's this, this, the, the reviews of books which are obviously send ups of a particular genre. Uh, that that there's some that are really funny. Also, there are also books that he's he writes reviews of. Which are almost like pitches to, to or synopses to, to actually write the write the, the the book he's talking about because some of these things actually I'd really like to read this this is good and so it, it, it's a marvelous book and it, it even starts with a review of a perfect vacuum by Stanislaw Lem that's the first chapter uh, so, so it's it's getting to seriously metafictional territory. I mean, when I read it back in the the early '80s, it really spoke to me because I was I was a fan of, big fan. I still am a big fan of, of Borges' Labyrinths, and it sort of struck me that he was a guy who was who was taking standing on Borges' shoulders and, and and just diving that much further. And I was I was also quite impressed that this was a guy who was in theory a science fiction author, but he was allowed, if you like to write a literary joke like this and, and I, I, I loved it then towards the end of 2017 anyway I was I was in a difficult position as a writer in that I had written a book that I was struggling to sell I was wondering what the hell do I do next as you do and I suddenly remembered A Perfect Vacuum, which is it's a book I often come back to. Well, I, I haven't reread it. I really, must re read it once a day. It's pretty good. But uh, the whole concept just I, I love. I, I, I love the idea of inventing stuff like that. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could do something like that. And I actually started jotting down ideas for books that I could... I'm, I'm doing air quotes. Can I do air quotes? I can do air quotes. Review. That I could do, I could review for um, for this book, and I started writing some of it. And it was going all right, but I thought, mm, okay, will this work? And then two things happened. The second of which, or the second of which first, was that I actually found a publisher for my next book. So I, that is now less of a worry. In fact, it was a two big deal. So I'm now engaged in writing the second book of of that one. Um, so that's good. Um, it means that I'm freed from having to think of what else to write next, which is also good. But the other thing, the first thing that happened, uh, which meant that it was never going to fly anyway, was that I got a copy of Their Brilliant Careers by Ryan O'Neill, who does the kind of thing that Stanislaw Lem did and the kind of thing that I was intending to do uh, so much better than I could ever do. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic book. So, what is what is it about? It is. It purports to be a compendium of brief biographies of sixteen of Australia's greatest writers, uh, none of whom actually exist. And and what is what is what, what is fun about it? Uh, what is clever about it? Is 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 that what Ryan O'Neill does? is 
he uh, he, he does something very similar to what Lem does with a perfect vacuum, in that he uses this vehicle he's invented for satire, for just silly games, fun, and something that's absolutely hilarious, and also for for describing. It's actually quite poignant at times, and some of the some of the writers he describes, uh, you think, hmm, I would like to read some of their stuff. I, I don't want to say too much about some of the authors in it. I mean that there's, I mean it starts off with um, who's, who's the first one? First one is uh, Rand Washington, who is this dreadful um, racist pulp science fiction writer, and you can sort of imagine, yeah, you, know, you can recognise an awful lot of. Science fiction, oh, bad science fiction tropes in that, and the sort of writer that um, you, you, you come across. Uh, that there are plenty of them, um, the ones who complained about the Hugo Awards, get the awarded to a woman and that sort of thing. And then, then there's then it goes on to Arthur Ruffler. Um, basically, change, Arthur Ruffler changes his name so that his second name is his Arthur and backwards. Who is a hardcore experimentalist. There was this wonderful epigraph at the beginning. Poor Arthur. The only constraint he couldn't overcome was his lack of talent from George Perrick. Um, and that, that, that is it's, it's, it's hilarious and sad at the same time. And there also there's, there's Rachel Deverell, who is it's a, it's a tragic story. But the thing about her is that she is purportedly the... Uh, estranged deceased wife of the author Ryan O'Neill and the story is that she is she was tasked with providing the index and uh, when you read the index there are plenty of jokes in there where, which uh, allude to their relationship shall we say for instance you will see wanker see O'Neill Ryan uh, and there, there are other ones which I'm not, not going to, I'm not to reveal because it, it's just fun. It's just fun finding all these little details in it, and you actually start to wonder how much of any of this is real. Uh, is Ryan O'Neill real? I, I, I believe he is, uh, and I, I also I, I believe his um, his mother was a big fan of Love Story, which sort of explains Ryan O'Neill. But you know the, the by the same author thing at the beginning. I don't know how many of those are really real, and I, 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 in some ways I don't want to Google them because I, 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 I like to, I like it to remain a bit of a mystery. Um, it, it is the most fun, the most fun I've, I've had, and uh, I've had reading a book for a long time. Um, and and if, if I was asked to summarise it, I would say it, it, it's, it's basically imagine that Douglas Adams is in the afterlife, is still holding the big parties that he used to hold. And uh, in one of these parties, uh, he introduces Borges to Flann O'Brien. Um, and Stanislaw Stanislaw Lem is sort of lurking in the background, but probably not going to get involved. But the, the, the three of them, or Adams, Borges and, uh, and O'Brien, decide to get together to concoct the most clever funny, um, witty book that's ever been made, and uh, they somehow work out how to transmit it down to um, our mortal world, and it gets written by Ryan O'Neill. It's bloody marvellous. Read it.